SpaceX just landed the same Falcon 9 booster for the 25th time. 25 orbital flights on one piece of hardware. Meanwhile, Blue Origin launched another New Shepard mission last week. The exact same 10-minute suborbital hop they've been flying since 2021. Same altitude, same profile, same limitations. How did we get here? Two companies started just two years apart, both landing rockets in 2015, both talking about the future of spaceflight. Yet one is launching twice a week while the other is still selling brief tourist rides to the edge of space. What happened between 2015 and now that turned equals into a competition that isn't even close anymore? Let's dive right in. A few days ago, Blue Origin launched another New Shepard mission. The rocket lifted off, crossed the Karman line at just over 100 kilometers, gave six passengers about three minutes of weightlessness, and landed 10 minutes after liftoff. Nothing broke, nothing failed. Everything went exactly as planned. But here's the problem. This is the exact same mission profile Blue Origin has been flying since 2021. The same altitude, the same flight duration, the same BE-3 engine, the same booster landing sequence they've now repeated more than 20 times. So what's actually being tested here? What new capability is being demonstrated? The honest answer is nothing. The BE-3 engine has accumulated dozens of flights without any meaningful upgrades. The capsule systems are mature. The recovery procedures are identical every time. Blue Origin isn't pushing any envelope anymore. They're just running the same operation over and over. And while that's happening, where is the rest of the industry right now? NASA's Artemis program is preparing for sustained lunar surface operations. SpaceX is building Starship variants designed to carry over 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit. China is assembling a multi-module space station and planning crewed lunar landings in the early 2030s. Private companies like Astrobotic are delivering payloads to the moon. This isn't future vision. This is what's actively being worked on right now at the end of 2025. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's flagship achievement in late 2025 was flying six tourists to the edge of space for 10 minutes. That contrast isn't just disappointing, it's structural. Now let's talk numbers, because numbers don't lie. In 2023, SpaceX launched 96 orbital missions. In 2024, they crossed 100 launches in a single year for the first time in history. In 2025, as of late December, SpaceX has launched over 110 times. That's more than two launches per week sustained across months. These aren't projections or promises. These are documented flights with payloads delivered, customers served, and revenue generated. The success rate during this period has stayed above 98%. Booster reuse has become so routine that a failed landing now makes headlines because it's rare. Multiple Falcon 9 first stages have exceeded 20 flights each. One booster crossed its 25th flight in 2025. Fairing halves are recovered and reflown as standard procedure. Turnaround times between booster landing and reflight have dropped below two months in multiple cases. What does that kind of launch tempo actually mean? It means Falcon 9 internal launch costs are estimated under $30 million per mission. It means SpaceX can afford to lose a booster occasionally because their production rate exceeds their loss rate. They manufacture Merlin engines and Falcon 9 stages faster than any other launch provider on Earth. This isn't just efficiency, this is industrial-scale spaceflight. So where does Blue Origin sit in comparison? As of the end of 2025, Blue Origin has attempted to reach orbit exactly twice with New Glenn. The first orbital attempt suffered issues during ascent that prevented full mission success, including incomplete first-stage recovery objectives. The second launch showed improvement, but still experienced anomalies that prevented Blue Origin from declaring the vehicle operational. No commercial payloads were delivered to orbit on either flight. New Glenn is powered by seven BE-4 engines on its first stage, each BE-4 produces roughly 2,400 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level, burning liquid oxygen and liquid methane. On paper, that should put New Glenn in the same performance class as Falcon 9. But paper performance means absolutely nothing without flight heritage. As of now, the total cumulative flight time of BE-4 engines on New Glenn is minuscule compared to Merlin engines, which have racked up millions of seconds of burn time across hundreds of launches. And here's where it gets interesting. 
or ironic, depending on how you look at it. New Glenn's design looks strikingly familiar. A two-stage, partially reusable orbital rocket. A reusable first stage designed for vertical landing. Grid fins for atmospheric control. Drone ship recovery instead of land-based return. Even the recovery operations mirror SpaceX's approach from nearly a decade ago. Does any of this sound familiar? This is where the criticism about copying comes from. And let's be clear, copying a proven architecture isn't inherently wrong. Engineers stand on the shoulders of what works. The problem isn't that Blue Origin followed a similar path. The problem is timing. SpaceX validated this architecture through years of failure and iteration, starting in 2013. They crashed boosters into the ocean. They blew up landing attempts. They refined their guidance systems through trial and error across dozens of missions. By the time Blue Origin began orbital testing with New Glenn in the mid-2020s, SpaceX had already landed hundreds of boosters and normalized reuse across the industry. Even drone ship landings highlight the gap. SpaceX lands Falcon 9 boosters on autonomous drone ships with success rates exceeding 95%. These landings are so routine now that they're barely mentioned unless something goes wrong. For Blue Origin, each recovery attempt is still treated as a major milestone instead of standard operations. Why is that gap so wide when both companies were landing rockets in 2015? Then there's the BE-4 engine saga itself. Development delays pushed this engine years behind schedule. Those delays didn't just affect Blue Origin, they directly impacted United Launch Alliance, which depends on BE-4 to power the Vulcan rocket. While SpaceX iterated through Merlin upgrades and moved on to full-flow stage combustion with Raptor, Blue Origin spent nearly a decade getting BE-4 flight ready. And even now, what's the production rate? SpaceX produces Raptor engines at multiple units per week. Design changes get incorporated continuously. Engines are tested, flown, analyzed, destroyed if needed, and replaced without stopping the overall program. That kind of production tempo simply doesn't exist at Blue Origin. So why does this comparison matter so much? Because it's not about vision statements or marketing hype. It's about measurable output. SpaceX launches over 100 times per year. Blue Origin flies New Shepard a handful of times and has yet to complete a clean, fully successful orbital campaign with New Glenn. SpaceX delivers payloads, crews, satellites, and revenue on every single flight. Blue Origin's most visible product remains a 10-minute experience for wealthy passengers willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some people argue the comparison isn't fair. They say Blue Origin and SpaceX are too different, that they started from different places, that they're playing different games entirely. But when you actually examine the facts, that argument collapses. These two companies have far more in common than most people realize, especially in their origins. Both were founded by billionaires capable of personally funding their space ambitions. Blue Origin was founded by Jeff Bezos in 2000. SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk in 2002. That's a two-year gap. Blue Origin actually had a head start. Both companies shared similar early beliefs about reusability. In 2015, SpaceX successfully landed a Falcon 9 booster after an orbital mission. That same year, Blue Origin landed its new Shepard booster after a suborbital flight. At that moment, they looked closely matched in the eyes of the industry. Both were demonstrating vertical landing, autonomous guidance, and reusable rocket hardware. Many observers thought they were on roughly parallel trajectories. Their long-term goals even sounded similar. SpaceX talked openly about Mars colonization and large-scale human settlement beyond Earth. Blue Origin talked about millions of people living and working in space, different destinations perhaps, but the same fundamental idea of building a thriving space economy, not just launching government payloads. So what actually changed? The real divergence started showing between 2014 and 2016. SpaceX made orbital launches its absolute top priority. Falcon 9 flew often, sometimes failing spectacularly, but improving with each attempt. By 2017, Falcon 9 was launching multiple times per month. In 2018, SpaceX introduced the Block 5 version, specifically designed for rapid reuse and high flight rates. By the early 2020s, SpaceX was launching dozens of times per year, then over 100. 
Blue Origin, meanwhile, continued refining New Shepard, while New Glen development stretched across years with limited public flight testing. So here's what we're really looking at. Two companies, two billionaire founders, both started within two years of each other, both landed rockets in 2015 and looked like equals. Both talked about transforming humanity's future in space. But 10 years later, one company is launching over 110 times a year with boosters flying their 25th mission, while the other is still running the exact same 10-minute tourist hop it perfected in 2021. This isn't about resources. Jeff Bezos has more personal wealth than Elon Musk. This isn't about talent. Blue Origin has hired some of the best engineers in the industry. This isn't even about technology because New Glenn's design essentially mirrors what SpaceX proved works a decade ago. So what is it about? Execution, urgency, the willingness to fail publicly, learn fast, and iterate relentlessly. SpaceX chose to fly often, break things, and improve. Blue Origin chose to move carefully, minimize risk, and perfect each step before moving forward. The result? One company has made orbital spaceflight routine. The other is still trying to reach orbit reliably. The gap is not closing, it's widening. And that's not speculation. That's just counting launches. What do you think happens next for Blue Origin? Can they catch up or has the window already closed? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If this breakdown gave you a clearer picture of where the industry actually stands right now, hit that like button and share this with anyone who still thinks Blue Origin and SpaceX are in the same league. And if you want more fact-driven space industry analysis without the hype, subscribe to Space Update 24 hours and turn on notifications. We're tracking what companies actually do, not what they promise. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. SpaceX's first major move after the B-18 disaster just shocked everyone. Booster 19's final section arrived at Mega Bay on December 20th, just 25 days after the first section left production on November 25th. Compare that to B-18 which took 136 days for the same process. What did SpaceX change to achieve this 3.5 times speed increase? And while they're accelerating toward Flight 12, ULA just lost Tori Bruno after 12 years as CEO. Two rockets also failed within 24 hours. Could this be SpaceX's biggest competitive advantage yet? Let's dive right in. Let's talk about what just happened at Starbase because the numbers tell a story that's bigger than most people realize. December 20th marked a turning point, when Booster 19's final section, the 